Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial brought to you by SolidWorks Zen. Okay, uh, this tutorial is about conveyor design and this is a particular conveyor designed to uh, take the boxes that are flat on the belt and make them stand upright for filling purposes or whatever have you. Um, okay then we're going to after we've designed the conveyor and shown you how it's done uh, we're going to make uh, drawings engineering drawings of the parts and the assemblies in the conveyor and afterwards we're going to show you an animation of how this conveyor would work we'll also tell you how to make this animation using SolidWorks animation and uh, that's just about it. Okay, some of these, some of the things I'll be talking about in this tutorial are generally related to conveyor design, uh, which won't be specifically to this design, but in general for all the conveyors. And some of the things that would be specifically uh, for this conveyor. Okay, uh, now we have our start condition. Uh, we're going to start making this conveyor uh, from a point where you know uh, what needs to be done in terms of the starting conditions like uh, you have your box somewhere around at this point you know where this point is you know where your um, box ends up after it has been stood upright and you have selected a motor. Uh, now this motor I've used for this purpose is uh, just for demonstration purposes only and uh, I've taken this motor from the link that you'll be seeing at the bottom right now and obviously uh, to make this conveyor work uh, your starting condition for the box and the ending condition for the box have to have a height difference. Uh, this height difference is required for uh, this star wheel assembly that actually does the work for the conveyor and uh, makes the box stand upright. It takes feed from this conveyor and throws the box on this conveyor in the upright position. Sorry. Okay, uh, also let's uh, look at the features that I've used on the motor. Now after downloading the motor from the link, uh, I've actually combined the bodies in the motor. That's all the bodies uh, that you will see in the file. Then afterwards, I have uh, purposely scale this motor to make it smaller here you can see that it's uniform scaling around the centroid and uh, this is the value I've used I've used this particular value for the scale to uh, round off the dimensions that I have for this motor and its mounting let's change the units to inches and you can see that it's about 3.63 inches this motor uh, for the purpose of mounting just for demonstration purposes uh, in actual you will be making your conveyor around the dimensions of the motor and uh, how it's going to get mounted on the conveyor that would be your starting step also another important point uh, is to know the dimensions of the box that you're going to be transferring. Uh, for this uh, particular tutorial, I'm going to be using a box that has a dimension of 12 inches by 7 and 3 quarter inches, and the thickness of the box is 2 inches. Uh, later on, I'll show you the box as well. And okay, now we can begin. Mm. 
making this conveyor let's start okay uh, before we start making any of the parts or the assemblies uh, we need to have a part and an assembly template uh, uh, why I want to touch up on the templates is because of the custom properties uh, custom properties are very helpful and useful to display information within the file and on the drawing as well so we'll add these custom properties to templates and uh, we'll save those templates and then use those templates to make the parts afterwards and the assemblies as well okay let's start uh, with a general template First of all, let's change the units to inches uh, and open the custom properties tab. Uh, the custom properties I'm going to be using is the description first. Yeah, for the parts, I'm going to add information here that would tell me what kind of stock this part would be made from, like a plate or a box section, a round bar or a tube. Uh, they can be any number of those. Next we have the part number. Okay, uh, For this uh, I use a SOLIDWORKS formula here that just copies the name uh, of your file the name with which you uh, save it and uh, displays it here. You can use this value in the drawing as well. Uh, next we have the revision. The revisions are very important in industries. Uh, whenever you make a design and you put it out to fabricate and over the course of time uh, some of the parts uh, don't perform as well as they're supposed to. So you add revisions to these parts to change their geometry or material or whatever and you enter that information here to tell the uh, fabricator uh, which of the revisions is currently applicable for now since we're making this first design we'll keep it as dash that means no revisions up till now then we have the material okay uh, for the material we're going to use another formula another command rather this command uh, this takes the material that you've given here in the part and displays it in the custom properties also it can be used in the drawings as well so you don't have to modify the title block each time in the drawing then we have the weight another command for uh, showing the weight of the part this command also it works the same way as the material mm. then we have the finish yes. we can uh, have different finishes for our parts <coughs> like maybe uh, some of the parts might be anodized for rust protection some of them might be painted uh, for aesthetics uh, some of them might be sandblasted for creating uh, traction and uh, we'll look at these in more detail according to the parts we make for now uh, let's leave it blank then we have our stock size okay this this another useful property uh, uh, this is uh, what I use this for is to put in the values for the raw part that is needed uh, to make the part that we're going to make uh, like for example if you have a plate in the description you will type the dimensions the maximum dimensions of the plate uh, that you would have to use to make this part and after machining operations and material removals you will end up with the part you're making so uh, 
this is the stock size. 